Okay, um, let's jump over to Vol. So looking at Vol, we did see realized Vol pop off its lows after that bounce, uh, but it hasn't gone nuts. Um, it's kind of stayed stable over the course of the week. So we got as low as 25, it bounced up to about 35, but it's in the low, mid to low 30s, kind of stayed there all week. Uh, the implied vols did come off into the weekend, uh, but have bounced since then. So we do have a little bit of positive carry back in terms of Bitcoin with implied trading above realized. Now on ETH, not quite the same situation. We saw Ethereum realized decent on the initial rally. Uh, it has stayed in the mid 30s as well. Although in the last little push just now, it's struggling to keep pace with Bitcoin. The, the implies are telling a totally different story, though. They really are getting hit. Uh, they're down They're down more than Bitcoin on the week. And therefore, we're in negative carry there, where implied vols are trading below realized because no one wants to hold the gamma on Ethereum right now because everyone's choking on it, right? So that's why implies are trading cheap. So there's times where implied trading below realized is attractive and you want to buy gamma because it's trading super cheap and things moving around and you think it's going to continue moving around. There are other times where you see a move and it's fairly short lived and the historical realized captures that move, but the implies just get battered and the implies are getting battered because no one really thinks the move is going to continue. And on top of that, the positioning is such that everyone owns gamma and doesn't want to hold it and doesn't want to bleed. OK, so it becomes a supply demand driven dynamic that takes implied lower. And often that implied lower is driving realized vol lower because it's telling you that everyone holds gamma, which makes it harder for gamma to actually work. So I think that's what the setup in Ethereum. I think the implied vol trading at a discount to realize is not an invitation to buy a load of gamma on Ethereum. I think it's a leading indicator to tell us that realized on Ethereum is about to fall off a cliff and it's about to get stuck at these strike levels uh, for next week. And we'll, sh we'll show you where the camera positioning is and, and to make that a bit more clear. OK, uh, anyway, that is my sort of thoughts and feelings about uh, Realized. Um, I also, yeah, FOMC and Bank of Japan, I think they are the main macro catalyst this week, but I don't expect the, them to do that much at these meetings. And therefore, I don't think it's going to have material impact on crypto markets. OK, looking at the curves, we are going into a steeper contango. Uh, we saw about a one half a volt to one and a half volt softening of the front end, September, October Bitcoin. Uh, the back end was firmer, though. So we had uh, December and longer maturities into next year up about a vol. So, you know, front going down, back going up. So clear divergence between Gamma and Vega. So people are happy to sell a bit of Gamma in the front end and they want to buy the longer dated Vega. Right. That's that's kind of what we're seeing. Uh, in terms of ETH, term structure, it moved in a similar fashion. Front end was down close to two bowls. Um, back end didn't catch as much as a bid as Bitcoin did. So again, Ethereum vol just not really able to keep pace and perform quite the same way as Bitcoin. And that front end coming under pressure as people really don't want to hold that gamma right now. OK, um, jumping over to the vol spread. So shifting down again, right? So we, we had seen the front end come close to flat as realized it popped, but that's dropped back down to four vols in the front. It gets as low as seven vols if we go out to three months. Ethereum seven vols under, that is a record for 90 day implied, right? That just, that's historic. That really doesn't get there ever. So um, quite a different dynamic to what we've been used to seeing in crypto markets since options markets have been liquid and tradable. Um, realized vols still positive, Ethereum over. So it tells you very much that they don't care if the realize is equal or in line right now. It's just all of the supply from the overwriting is basically saying the options market is demanding a discount for Ethereum to hold Ethereum volatility because they keep getting stuffed in it more and more and more of it. OK, so that's that's the that's the new regime that we're in. How long are we going to stay in that regime? Who knows? But right now, the fact that the, the low point of the curve is in the nine month space uh, in the 90 day space, sorry, three month space. It's the options market's way of telling you that this condition isn't about to change. It's going to stay like this for a few months. OK, and that's because all of the ETF decisions around Bitcoin are likely to play out over the next few months. And so people are thinking that's going to be the driver. Yeah. Now, in terms of how you would trade this, given it's at historic levels, you don't want to touch the gamma with a barge pole um, because everyone's got it and it's not really moving. Um, if you wanted to play it from a volar perspective, the only real sensible way to do it, in my opinion, is forward volatility. So you would be buying the spread 
Ethereum, buying that, selling Bitcoin in the as long as you can go. June, if you can get longer, maybe deck next year. If you can get that spread on at sub six or something, if you're like negative six, that would be quite a good entry. And then against that position, you would sell one to two months the other way around. We'd sell Ethereum and buy Bitcoin in a size to neutralize your gamma exposure, right? And that's what forward volatility is, right? Where you have the long dated Vega, but you don't want the gamma position, so you use short dated options to neutralize the gamma position, right? That is a forward vol position. I think that is the way you should play this if you want to get long Ethereum because you're going to be waiting a while, but these levels are historic. And from a mean reversion perspective, we're so far off average levels. It is interesting for sure. Uh, but again, liquidity in the really long end stuff like December next year, I'm not even sure if that liquidity exists. If, if you're at a fund, maybe you'll get, you'll get some market makers to make you something. If you're retail, good luck. There's not really a lot you can do. Yeah. Anyway, that's just my two cents on what I would do with this vol spread at such crazy levels. Okay, um, and then wrapping up with skew in terms of the vol stuff, um, as the market bounced from these key supports, skew did reverse pretty quickly. We saw call premium come back across the whole Bitcoin curve, except for the weeklies. We saw the front end, at a, the front end's only about a one vol put premium for those weeklies, but the one to three month maturities are around two vol call premium, and the long end got as high as five vol call premium. So really demand for the calls coming in very fast. Um, SKU remains very spot sensitive. So, you know, the minute we look like we're breaking levels on the upside or the downside, the SKU responds to it. Uh, but remember how we said we looked like we were breaking 25K last week and the SKU actually stopped going bid. The put SKU kind of stayed where it was. And I, and I was saying that that might be a bit of a signal, a bit of an exhaustion signal that if the SKU can't keep going further into puts when we're breaking spot levels, then, then maybe the sell-off's done. And that is it. that is what ended up transpiring. Yeah. Uh, Ethereum skew also reversed. Cool premium coming back from two months and longer. Uh, the shorter dates, one week to one month, is about flat, maybe very slightly put premium, about half a vol. Uh, but the rest of the curve has gone into calls as well. Um, we did see some cool buying, actually, I'll talk about in a minute, uh, in Ethereum. Uh, and then, you know, yeah, we already said, you know, the exhaustion signal that we got from the Bitcoin skew there last week seemed to be pretty good. Yeah, if, if anyone sort of managed to notice that or pick that up. All right, there, there are the dashboards. They, they flip back into buy puts for Bitcoin and, and, and neutral for ETH. Um, you know, if, if Bitcoin is potentially getting close to, to resistance again, I'd probably wait for it to touch sort of 28, 28 and a half before actually putting shorts on. Um, but here is a bit no man's land. Uh, if we jump into the flows, volumes were up a little bit on Bitcoin as the call activity came back. We saw a big overwriter um, rolling shorts from September to October on the 28K strike. Um, that was probably the biggest clip there, uh, which you can see in the pink September and the purple being October. Uh, we saw outright call buying in Oct to December outright calls bought in the 30 to 33K strikes. So that's all of these ones here. Uh, and then on the downside, we saw a bit of a mixed flow where some September puts were bought. That's the pink blobs there. Uh, some short dated 22nd of September this Friday as well. And then we saw sellers of October put spreads, uh, the 26K, 23K put spread. All right, that's the Bitcoin flow. Um, looking over at Ethereum flow, it was dominated by these massive call buys. So, you know, there's a massive call over writer who keeps selling Ethereum Vega to the street, and that's what's creating the supply demand imbalance. They've got a ridiculous amount of call contracts that they are short. Well, they were willing to buy some back this week by the looks of it. So we had 50K options, which is a pretty large clip, uh, getting bought in October 2000s and the December 2200s. That, that didn't actually bring much of a bid to the vol, which just goes to show people like breathing a sigh of relief and saying, have those back. We don't want them. Yeah. When the entire street has been long bowl and choking on it for months and months and months, someone comes in to buy a big clip. The street doesn't mind giving it back to them, basically. Right. So that's kind of what went on this week. Um, outside of that, the, the other sort of major clips were call spread buyers in, in September, 1750, 1900. So opportunistic call spread buy there because the vols are cheap. And so you get decent leverage on that call spread if you are bullish. Personally, I don't, I don't think it's going to get that far. Uh, and then on the downside, the 1,600, 1,500 put spread as well. That was bought from a protection perspective. 
Yeah. So any any directional views you have, you can express them very cheaply in these options because they trade on a 30 handle. Like, but the truth is we're struggling to move, right? Um, we had these knee-jerk moves and then we just go and die for five days and do nothing, right? So that seems to be the way crypto is behaving. So I don't get too excited about owning gamma when it's like that. Yeah. Okay. Um Speaking of gamma, gamma positioning, the, the BTC and ETH gamma positioning is definitely diverging now. So you can see here that it was quite choppy, the positioning on Bitcoin this week. You had, um, we were short. Um, after We went into expiry. After expiry, we flipped long. So that means some short strikes rolled off. And then as you can see, we've gone back to negative again. Okay. So as we've rallied and as, as, as the 22nd of September flows have come in to buy a bit of optionality, that's taking the dealers short. You can see all these red blobs where dealers are short the um, 22nd of this Friday. And against that, they're long a couple of these strikes on the following Friday. But they're also short these 28K calls on the upside. So if the market does want to break 28K, the street's going to get even shorter gamma. I mean, we're going to run away from these local strikes a little bit. So actually, it'll be quite a stable short gamma probably. Um, but if we stay here, then yes, we could get shorter into Friday, but as that expires, then we're going to flip long again, basically. So it's a bit of a mixed sort of positioning in Bitcoin. Uh, this is quite different to Ethereum, which has just been getting longer all week. Um, and that's because as we've rallied, we've moved to these big blobs here, which is uh, September 1650 and 1700 strikes. Also October, that, that blue one is October. We've got 22nd as well. So there is a ton of long gamma here that we've rallied into on Ethereum. And that is only going to amplify this Friday and into next Friday, given that this is red and purple blobs that we're looking at that are those next weekly expiries. OK, so I think Ethereum is really going to struggle to do anything materially above 1700 because of all this gamma positioning. And it does seem to be having some impact. OK, and you can see that in today where Bitcoin's up and Ethereum struggling to follow it. Yeah. So I think that is the that is the setup. Uh, I have way more confidence that Ethereum is going to be stuck than Bitcoin. And Bitcoin is probably the one with the headlines as well. Um, so how would I how have I played that? That's the summary for this week in crypto. Thanks a lot. As always, I'll catch you guys later. <laughs>